Welcome back to Coffee Talk. We are here with Eston Smith, and he is taking care of one of the oldest festivals in the state of Indiana right now. What is that festival, Eston? That's the Chelsea Jubilee. Uh, it's been this will be our 152nd Jubilee. Right. Um, it's, of course, that takes us back to 1869, and we really think that it goes back another 10 or 15 years. Right. But the first written documentation of the Jubilee was in 1869. There are some older people that remember going before it was documented, well, so. Well, it, we have written documents of Civil War veterans saying they attended. Yes. You know, when they were a kid, right. which would put it back prior to that. Right. So. And most things do start before they're documented they, uh, for a couple of years, you know. Yeah. People just think, well, we're just going for a picnic, and then all of a sudden it ends up being... Well, it kind of started off that way. Yeah. It was a, It was a harvest festival uh, back in 1869. You know, it started off as a harvest festival, uh, a way for the community just to give thanks for the harvest and... and uh, to get together and just kind of enjoy yourself. Uh, one year in the early uh, 1870s, they come out with a new Oliver plow. Oh yes, I remember that. <laughs> and uh, so they had a plowing contest it, out it, there. Yeah. And um, they left it up to the people in attendance to. to Pick out a winner, right? Well, being a good community as they are, they called it a tie, you know. So that's kind of the way we are in well, the country, right? And that's fine, that's fine. Now, with the Jubilee Festival, you do some special things with the kids, and what are those? Oh, yeah. I mean, if uh, parents out there, if you're if you're looking to get a couple hours rest on Saturday uh, at one o'clock, uh, we have uh, kids games. We do um, pedal pull, penny search, um, bubble gun blowing contest, hay bale toss. Uh, there's another one in there someplace that I can't remember. Uh, but last year, last year, um, because of the historical atmosphere uh, part of it, I built a quarter scale Napoleon cannon. Right. And uh, so we load that thing up with candy. And we get on one end of the basketball court, and we shoot candy all the way across the basketball court. And uh, the kids really enjoy that. But we take care of your kids, and uh, they'll all go home with some money. Not only get to play games, but they all go home with some money in their pocket. Because all the things that they compete in, oh. they get paid with it's $2 bills. $2 bills, silver, uh, silver dollars, dollars. Uh, 50 cent pieces, and quarters. So... I so say silver dollars, Susan, Susan B. Be Anthony, Anthony dollars. Yeah. But that's money they don't normally see. And, well, yeah, and from what I can tell, they turn right around buy an ice cream <laughs> or something. With it, Times know. don't change. Yeah, yeah. You'll yeah. spend your money on ice cream no matter how old you are. Yeah. And so, now, with the, with the events that you have, I asked if you had spitting crickets and marbles, and you told yeah. me no. Well, I kind of looked at you funny when you said spitting <laughs> crickets. <laughs> Well, I tried to encourage him to put spitting crickets in there. Uh, I'll have to look that one up and get when, one back with her next year. When I was younger, we actually went to competitions to spit crickets. Oh. I mean, you, and there's a there's a knack to it. Well, we used to spit watermelon seeds. See, it's, a, crickets. It's, it's the same thing, but you have to roll your tongue a little different to get the cricket <laughs> to shoot the right way. You shoot them so, out forward or backward? Forward. Oh, okay. Forward. So you got to hold that little cricket, and, and he's alive. Oh. He's a live cricket. <laughs> So I'm thinking how many kids could I shove a cricket in their mouth? Is oh, no. You tell the kids you shoot this cricket and you get $10. I bet, <laughs> I bet there'd be a bunch of them try it. Oh, I'll have to try that one. We never got $10. I think the most I ever got was 5 <laughs> That's pretty good. It was pretty good back then. Yeah. So, so but the other thing about uh, the park as we know it today, and most people know it, is the Saluda Township Park. Yes. But what most people don't know was... 43 years ago, the Jubilee Association uh, bought that property, six acres there in Chelsea, uh, turned it into a park, put slides, right. teeter-totters, basketball court, merry-go-round, built a shelter house, um, and we donated that to the township for yes. use as a park. And the township just maintains it. Well, 
the township mows it. What? Yeah, that's uh, all of the all of the maintenance, the signs, the electric, mm -hmm. the water. Like last year, we put in another two hundred and fifty feet of water line. That that stuff, the Jubilee Association still pays for. Right. So, so this festival actually helps maintain the park. That's absolutely correct. Any any improvements in maintaining of the park. Now, what else does the park? What else does the festival do in the community besides the park? Well, <clears throat> the we have four church groups, and this is really <clears throat> important to us as a community. Right. We have four four church groups. So, you know, each one of those church groups sell different stuff, so they don't compete against right, each other. Right. Um, we have a fire department that comes out and does fish. So um, they use that as a way to uh, fund their activities through the rest of the year. I mean, a, right. a lot of things like the ladies' aid. Right. You know, they'll use the money that they make <coughs> at the Jubilee to help fund their church or organizations and right. other activities that they do. So. You know, we don't let any outside vendors in selling hot dogs or right. anything like that. You know, right? It's it's local nonprofit organizations. That, that's right. Providing yeah. the the food or the yeah yeah. So it it serves the community in right. that way as far as uh, the uh -huh. local churches and, and fire departments and that type of thing. Oh, that's awesome. Now on Friday night and Saturday night, we have. Friday evening we start off at about five o'clock and we have some line dancers there mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, then we have the open ceremonies and <clears throat> you can bet we'll pledge allegiance and the right. national anthem. Uh, some of the local churches kind of open it up, you right. know, so we have an opening ceremony. Um, and at the end of that, we always get all the kids up there and we hand out plastic horns. And that's the trumpets and opening. That's, that's the signal that it's officially opened. But th then we have uh, music from 7 to 10. 10 yes. uh, Smoke and Cinders Band will play on Friday. And uh, then Saturday, you have a, a long list of things happening starting at noon. Uh, yes, we have Antique Tractor Parade. Then the kids game start at 1. Uh, and they usually last about two, two and a half hours. Um, then, um, then we come back uh, with country music again right. at uh, seven, from seven to ten again. Right. So we'll have music both nights and just a ton full of stuff for the kids to do on Saturday. And that's not the only thing you do. You also have booths that are there. Yes. Not just the not just the nonprofit. That's that's right. We have you know we have con um, people come in. They'll be selling antiques, uh, wood furniture, crocheted items. Uh, there's a lady there that does beautiful blankets, mm -hmm. handmade blankets and mm -hmm. crochets and it just. Uh, so there's all kinds of crafts. All kind all kinds of crafts. Um, wind chimes. There's one lady that makes wind chimes out of glass bottles, and so I mean, there's a lot of things for people just to kind of walk around uh, about right. an acre, acre and a half there, and kind of. Now, do you have homemade ice cream? No, I wish we did. We have ice cream, but it's Prairie Farms. They deliver it for us. Right. Uh, you know, so it's fresh every day. And it goes with the pie that's it, not hickory nut pie. Uh, not hickory nut pie, but it's uh, pecan pie, cherry pie. I can say right. all kind of pies right. uh, uh, the church you know, the church booth brings Yeah, there is an unusual pie still. Not, I mean, I know hickory nut pie was a big one until maybe four or five years ago, but there's still some unusual pies. Oh, yeah. My... my uh, my my wife has a recipe for oatmeal pie. Oatmeal pie? And, you know. Is there still gooseberry pie? Every once in a while we'll get a gooseberry pie and a raspberry pie. So, you know, those things are still kind of coming in. Though. Yeah. I've, I haven't had a gooseberry pie in a long time. Yeah, but you can you can walk around and at one church booth get your pie and ice cream, get a taco salad from another. Um, or a fish sandwich. A fish sandwich from the fire department, and and a ribeye steak from another one, and hamburgers and cheeseburgers from another one. So, 
you know, I have to make sure that I visit every one, one of them as it goes around. Yeah. Get a little something at each one. <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty good. Now, is, does it cost to get into the Chelsea Jubilee? It doesn't cost a thing. Admission is free. Um, the only thing that we say is we don't want any alcohol. It's a community event, event uh -huh. lots of kids, no alcohol, and we say, please leave your pets at home. Oh, yes. You know, that would be uh, good. So there's so many kids and things running around. Uh, you know, years ago we had a little problem with the dog. We said, oh, "Okay, I mean, well, I love my dog, but I leave, I'll leave him at home for a right, couple of days." Yeah. Right, that's no big deal. So it's, bit, it's safer for the kids. But uh, now, since there's no cost to get in, um, does it cost for the kids to participate in any of the events that they do? We the the. Uh, Handover School helps us, their FFA helps us with the pedal pull. Yes. And uh, I write them a check when they leave. It doesn't cost kids anything. Okay. So the, that's the only thing where, you know, a little money exchanges on the that other side. That does take some time, though. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, they, they bring the pedal pull out. They yes. set up the hay bales, you know. And if it wasn't for the kids of the FFA, we wouldn't be able right. to have the pedal pull on the kids' love it. Now, with the hay bale toss, which it's different from the pedal pull, but the hay bale toss, what is the farthest someone has pitched a bale of hay? Well, I think we had a young man last year uh, threw that thing about 33 feet. That's pretty good. That's, that. of course, there's a lot of rolling in there, but rolling, oh. rolling counts. So you, you count it till it stops moving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so he just got a good motion. He on just that. got a good. He yeah. just got a good roll. He did. But we'll, you know, we'll make one two beats wide for the little ones, and then a half a bale, oh, and then go. Depending on. on the age. Yes. Yes. Or the size. Uh, uh, size is easier to to get them lined up in. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, that's all, at least they have a chance because oh, I was yeah. thinking, you know, what if it's somebody's thirty years old and they're only four feet tall? Oh well, you know, that's the other thing. After the kids play, you. A lot of times, especially the hay bale toss, yes. then, uh, then the parents and the grandparents, they want to know how far they can throw that hay bale. So right. we make time for, you know, if mom and dad want to throw a hay bale, we sure let them do it. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, if you just had spitting crickets in there. <laughs> spitting crickets. Okay. I want to remember that He's going to be looking that up. They're going to have spitting crickets next I'll year. I'll have to. <laughs> you have spitting crickets. I'll spit against you. Next okay. Year. You have to. You have to do it though. <laughs> so. I don't know if I want to try it this year or wait till next year. I didn't get it oh, advertised this year. You can find a cricket somewhere. You want, to you want to go ahead and advertise it, and I'll, I'll find some crickets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how many people would enter this year. They'd be, get there and go, what? But you have to advertise that ahead of time. I told them it's all your idea. Hey, I'm telling you, I used to do it as a kid. It was a big competition when I was a kid. Marbles and spitting crickets yeah. is what we did. So you have to think about that yeah, one. I will. Now, is there any way people can contact you if they have questions about the Chelsea yes, Jubilee? Yes, they, they can reach me on my home phone, and that's area code 812 866 Four one seven eight. Okay. Um, and then if they get lost someplace, and I've had that happen, I'm coming, but where am I? It's on State Highway 62 in Chelsea. Uh, but they can also reach me on my cell phone, which is 80812-801-1999. Right. And, and they need to use your cell phone because a lot of cell phones don't work out there. Uh, a lot of cell phones don't work. I live in that magic little hole. Use, they work pretty good out to park, but at my house they don't work good, so that's why I give everybody my home phone number. Right, right. So, well, that's great. So we'll make sure they can get in contact with you. Is there anything else we need to tell them about Chelsea Jubilee? Oh. We right. need to tell them the date, don't we? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this year. That's the important one. This year it is a little odd, and it catches us uh, that way every every few years right but the jubilee is always always the first saturday in september first saturday in september always the first saturday in september but you know what but it starts on friday so you know what friday is oh. it's august 31st so so 
It actually starts on August 31st, That's but the parade correct. and all the big stuff is yes. Saturday. September the 1st. First Saturday, September the 1st. First, first Saturday in September. Yeah. So the locals will make it out to the Friday night thing. Oh, there'll be a and lot of people there on Friday. Friday? Oh, yeah. And Saturday will be a, more of them Sa coming from Saturday, out of town. Saturday will be a, a big day. We, we usually have anywhere from 80 to around that 80, 90 mark you know kids play in there right. so so they bring out another a lot of parents and a lot of right. grandparents as well and then on saturday you have anywhere from three to six hundred people coming through uh yeah 300 is going to be on a low number uh so we usually range between that four or five hundred number right you know. that's a lot of people uh, six acre lot you know we can you can handle we it. can take care of it. Some, <laughs> every once in a while you get a little cramp for parking well let's hope there's good weather this year last year it rained didn't it it rained on friday and uh it kind of put the damper on it friday evening had a yeah, good had, had a good saturday we had a lot of rain on friday that last year yes we did so it made it difficult parking on saturday uh yeah the uh, the parking's all in it, all in grass and you know as long as people don't get crazy well this year hard. we're going to hope it doesn't rain yeah well, i hope so <laughs> but i'd like to have a a good two-day event last year we got a, a good one and a quarter day event in, you know. yeah yeah, yeah. Kind of well, hurt, kind of hurt some of the churches and their, you know. Oh yeah, and and that hurts their ability to do the things they want to it do. Does. It does. So, well, we are really glad you came to talk to us today. Oh, well, this am, is a cool, cool festival. I am just so pleased that you asked me to come. Well, thanks again. Thank you. And as for you all, as always, we thank you for watching.